person who has taught us that trade policy can connect us across lines of partisanship, ideology, and so many other things is Lori Waller. And I want Lori to give us a little insight on where you see trade policy going in the new Congress, but also how we can use trade issues to bring together coalitions that you might not otherwise see in any of you. Lori Waller. Well, before giving the opening to speak about trade, I was just thinking, listening to our two wonderful congressmen, that in fact there are a couple issues rising right now in the trade realm that are perfect inside-outside targets. Not just because they can be transpartisan, so you actually can build a majority, but because you can build a majority, there are things we can win on. And so one of the most powerful things, I think, for the progressive movement is to be getting some wins, to show the power so that you have to come back and be consulted, be part of it, have it clear that if you don't pay attention to those votes and those people, then you're not going to get done what you want to get done. So the two rising issues right now are the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP. Now, who here has heard of TPP? We've got three important audience. All right, this is it. I love you guys. Because I'm sad to report that frequently when one says TPP in public, people think it relates to toilet paper. Yes. Um, the TPP, in sum, for those who haven't heard about it, Trans-Pacific Partnership, basically just think NAFTA on steroids with the whole world. Think corporate power tool, as in everything they care about is going to get screwed. It is the current corporate Trojan horse. And the reason why it actually is a great organizing opportunity for progressives is actually, unfortunately, why it's so damn dangerous. It cuts across almost any issue, value, or goal any sentient human being in this country might actually care about, including some of those brothers and sisters on a different part of the political spectrum than some of us. So over in our part of the land, it is the usual NAFTA on steroids attack on food safety, the environment, officially jacking up corporate power in a lot of different ways, extending medicine patents. So on the front door, you've got the president trying to bring down medicine costs. Everyone got their head kicked in over Obamacare in Congress. On um, the back door, you've got a trade agreement that actually could undermine the actual medicine formularies for Medicare and Medicaid. You can't make this shit up. That are in Obamacare. And our own trade negotiators are doing that in the back door, while on the front, they're trying to implement the cost cutting. Or, try this one out for size, corporate tribunal panels for three private attorneys get to meet in secret, and any foreign corporation can go attack any U.S. domestic policy or law skirting our courts and our laws, and actually privately enforce a public treaty, i.e. formally corporations elevated to the level of a nation state. Now, is not that the fantasy of a certain sector of corporate America? Yes, it is. But it also is the horror, the nightmare, the dread, actually, of some of the most conservative Tea Party folks in the country. Because what from us is a corporate sneak attack that is undermining our most important progressive goals and values. And by the way, this, this ain't hypothetical. Some folks know about this NAFTA Chapter 11, which is investor tribunals. So this TPP would expand this vastly. And since NAFTA, the corporations are really caught on to this. So like just last month, there was a $2.4 billion penalty, non-appealable these corporate tribunals, against Ecuador for what? Oil company, Occidental, broke a contract. Broke a contract. Contract said if you do blah, blah, you're going to lose your contract. So the government came back and said, you did blah, blah times 14, you're going to lose your contract. What did they do? They said, oh, it's your law, it's your courts. Ha! We're going to go to this corporate tribunal. $2.4 billion, ladies and gentlemen, that's half the health care cost for the entire country of Ecuador for an entire year. These cases are exploding. Billions are being paid out. That's how we hear it. From a conservative perspective, also 100% accurate, just a different frame, this is about an international governance regime that undermines U.S. sovereignty and solvency. This is United Nations and World Bank supported tribunals 
attacking the U.S. Constitution are checks and balances in federalism. This is an international government system undermining the democracy that patriots in this country have lived and fought for for hundreds of years. This is a not allowable attack on our sovereignty. It's united. And it really is our corporate power versus people's. The frame, it just needs to be talked about in different ways. So also in the TPP, another thing that's very uniting is an attack that is basically the backdoor of SOPA, Stop Online Piracy Act. Now that had some reasonable copyright stuff in it. That was the engine. The whole rest of all the cars in the caboose on that train were crazy ass overreaches into internet freedom, undermining of innovation. And basically, more or less, I would end up with a $10,000 fine when I send my ma a recipe I legally bought for her, and then online send it to her. It's called an unintentional non-commercial copying. It literally would criminalize our use of the internet and have the internet providers responsible for throwing us off of access if we do three of those. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. But you know something? From a right perspective, that is lunatic, intrusive international governance. From us, it's undermining internet freedom. Same issue, totally united. Why has TPP even gotten as far as it goes? Because of secrecy. Another issue that on a transpartisan, all-American, puts all our hair on fire basis, pisses people off. Three years of secret trade negotiations where the United States and 10 other countries are sitting in a room writing a binding global governance system. 29 chapters, only five have to do with trade. So they're a real misbranding operation, right? We're all being told it's free trade, so we're exports. Just for what it's worth, we already have free trade agreements with the countries that comprise 90, 90% of the GDP of all those countries in this agreement. So for 10% of market access, this export growth job stuff, which is clearly a technical term, horse shit, this is actually just a corporate branding. So it's being called trade, so anyone who's against it is supposed to be a knuckle-dragging isolationist. But in fact, it is just a sneak attack that, on a bipartisan, transpartisan basis, we can stop. TPP, like Dracula, would not do well in the sunshine. So what is our job as citizens? We keep our mouths open. So the number one thing here to do, both through different organizations, through all of our networks, be it from your Facebook, be it from your community groups, faith groups, work, is get the word out. And on that table, from which I could not find myself, are all kinds of good materials. We at Public Citizens Global Trade Watch are very keen for you to violate our copyright. Please take any one of these materials online at tradewatch.org. Tradewatch.org. There's a little card that puts you to our website, a new card that's someplace in my lap. Take anything you want, put it on your letterhead, put your name on it, send it to your friends. That will make us very happy. We hope it comes back to us, our material, unrecognizable by our name, in your name. Does that mean the word's getting out? The TPP is totally susceptible to being Dracula's strategy, and it's transpartisan. And if anyone thinks it's now the power building tool, just think of the opportunity, because, just to continue, the unions are up in arms about it, because it has all the investor privileges that promote offshoring. The damn thing bans Buy America Procurement. Bans Buy America Procurement. It has in it rolling back a lot of the financial regulation at all the consumer groups. So, you know, someone here from Consumers Union, a lot of people who are members of Consumers Union get the publications. They've been fighting for improving, basically putting the banksters on the leash. So, what have we got? A backdoor deletion of Wall Street. Almost everyone's ox gets scored. And so there's some great talking points, actually, that I was inspired to write by a briefing I did at the Progressive Caucus, where folks said, just do a bullet on each one of those. That you figure out what part of it gets your community, your friends wound up, but getting the word out. Second piece of it is, how could this sneaky, nefarious thing ever actually become U.S. law? It needs to get signed, but who in Congress is actually want to be responsible for that, right? Even if you like part of it, part of it's going to make you nuts. So... There's going to be a push this year, I fear, for an unreasonable secretive procedure called Fast Track. It is a procedure that delegates away five different separate congressional authorities that are constitutional in one lump sum. It is a very unifying fight in Congress. So TPP is a public fight. 
When TPP gets to Congress, we are off Schitt's Creek minus a paddle. Because that means it's been finished, and it's going to be, if certain, sadly, administration figures have their way, on a legislative luge run. That is fast track. Fast track basically allows an agreement like the TPP to be signed before Congress votes. This is not constitutional in the sense that Congress has exclusive authority over trade policy, Article 1.8. This is another transpartisan winning issue. Now, we all think of fast track as something like legislative laxative for corporations. But another way of thinking about it is a legislative laxative that's bad for the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> so we can go to our conservative friends. We can go to our conservative friends who are very worried about checks and balances, about power grabs by a president they really don't like. We don't have to agree with them about that. From our perspective, it's about democracy. But there is a majority to be built in Congress on this issue. And in fact, this was done before, under very similar circumstances in 97 and 98. When Bill Clinton asked for fast track, Republican Congress, with a bunch of really pretty out there freshmen and sophomores, who even actually then owed allegiance to their speaker, not so much the case this time, 177 Democrats, 71 Republicans, 240 plus vote against Fast Track, brought down against all that corporate power. Wall Street, the chamber, everyone was on the other side. And so was President Clinton, he wanted it. We won, the people won, because we got together with our basically improbable counterparts. And I would just leave with the image of the horseshoe. Politics in America is a horseshoe. The bottom, the progressives, and the radical right frequently are closer together than either of us are to the Wall Street top of that horseshoe that is still allegedly Democratic or Republican. So in some of these issues, and these two trade-related issues are some of them, by thinking of the horseshoe at the top and the bottom, which also relates a lot to class, income, being discriminated against historically on race, on gender, and sexual preference, the horseshoe together can stop both of these sneaky corporate power attacks. And we all at the bottom up, working with our partners in the Congress and the inside, can actually do that this year. So that, that is, I would say, the overview. Laura Wallace. Laura You know if somebody's good. You know if somebody's good when she's going through the sofa thing and Grijalva's going to pull. That's good. We should, that's what we should do. <laughs>